but um, let me just uh, um, uh, give a, a starting point so that you have some context to think about. So, so this is a um, kind of um, analysis of wave incident on a step potential. So, wave incident on step potential. So you saw this in your FET simulation. I'm, uh, we are now going through the actual mathematics of it. You've seen the simulation result. So, um, so this is uh, a fairly simple situation that localizes a particle. And we've dealt with just plane waves, um, not interacting with any potential. So this is the very next level of complication we can add. We can have a potential that's at you know, zero most of the zero. And then at some boundary, let me call that x equals zero, the potential suddenly jumps to some v naught. And we can consider particles of different energies incident on this potential. Um, let's say if the energy of the particle was below this step size, um, what would you expect the overall behavior of this uh, particle that's incident on it to behave like? Really? Any possibility for it to overcome? It's actually going to be zero. We'll talk about that. But OK, other than the small possibility, what else were you going to say? So a larger possibility is to bounce back. To be reflected back. It's like, you know, imagine this classically. Classical place is OK place to start, as long as you realize not everything classical is not everything in the classical intuition is right. So, well, this particle does not have enough energy to end up on up here. So that means as it's trying to penetrate into this region, it will feel a force pushing it back, and that force is enough overall to just bounce it back. Now, if you have a particle that has enough energy to overcome that barrier, what do you expect to happen? Keep going, right? Classically, that's what would happen. The particle coming in has some speed and frequency and all that speed. It will slow down here because the kinetic energy has been reduced. But it has, it will just continue going. Quantum mechanically, what happens is, um, I mean, it largely agrees with that, but there's a small discrepancy that it's going to come up. So the particle, it won't have any chance to end up way out here. But the particle, this one, it will have a small possibility to end up here. It will have small possibility to be found here. Because the, prop, the wave function will exponentially decay. And there's some length at which you can find it in this region. The one that has enough energy to overcome it, uh, let me call this E1, E2. One that has enough energy to overcome it, it will actually have non-zero probability of being bounced back. So to actually figure that out is where you have to set up the wave equation, solve it in the two regions. Let's call it regions one and two. You have to solve it in these two regions. And then you have to match the boundary condition, figure out the coefficients, and that'll tell you the likely, probability for this one, probability of reflection and transmission. And for this one, uh, probability of reflection will be actually one. But um, you can kind of, you will have a form of a solution here. So you can try to find you know, um, what's the, the non-zero probab probability of particle being found here. So um, I guess I have enough time to write down the equation, and then we'll just leave it there. Uh, we'll start off with the setup. Next time we are on this, um, it won't be on Thursday, because on Thursday I have to 
describe some things for the lab. Um, so, well, let me write down the equations in regions one and two. So I'm writing down time independent to Schrodinger equation. So in region one, my potential is zero. So for in region one, um, region one, my equation is minus h bar squared over 2m, double position derivative of, and let me use a subscript to indicate my solution in region one. x, um, zero potential, is equal to whatever energy it's coming in with. So e psi one x. Okay. So this is one set of equation. Um, there's actually a couple, um, two independent solutions to this. We'll write it out later. Um, and in region two, we have a different Schrodinger equation. We have now some potential energy. So the equation in region two is minus h bar squared over 2m, double position derivative of psi two of x, and now plus v naught psi two x. And what keeps, uh, uh, that's, and that's equal to, it's gonna be the same energy because the energy of the particle doesn't change. Psi two x. And what keeps this solvable is this fact. It's the fact that this potential energy, it's constant. So um, this is actually not any different, uh, not any harder than this one. All that changing is that this moves over. So instead of E, you have E minus V naught. So really uh, what you have here is what's staying, um, if you think of this kinetic energy, then your form of equation stays the same. Because here your kinetic energy will change to E minus V naught. But otherwise it'll be the same form. And so what we do, when we have more time later, is that you find a form of solution for region one, you find a form of a solution in region two, and then you enforce a, some boundary conditions at this boundary. Um, I think both of them are a continuity of wave function. And I will double check, but I'm pretty sure it's a continuity of the first derivative of the wave function. So the wave functions that from here to here has to connect smoothly. And I can, uh, I think this makes intuitive sense. We've been working with this earlier, right? Yes? We've been working with this earlier when we are doing infinite square well, right? Um, it's this, then needs a little bit more justification. I will do that next time we come back to this.